And today also, I think we will do our English declaration to start the work. Before we start the work, English declaration. Let us pray with you. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We are so privileged to be in your house at such a time like this. The devil would have wished that we were elsewhere at the bar, at the club. The devil would have wished that we were elsewhere in jail, oh God. But then you brought us here. We could have been elsewhere hiding in the closet, oh God, with darkness hovering all over us. But you brought us, you point us up inside out and you brought us into your house. We are privileged. And we are so grown that as we have come in your presence that you will fill us. Lord, fill us to the brain that there will be no room for negativity, for worldliness in the name of Jesus. And as we wait upon you, transform us, O oh God. Change something on the inside of us that we will run back celebrating that we have met a transforming God. Thank you, Lord. Speak your way, your servants here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's do our increase declaration. Let's all uh, please say after me. I confess today that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. In Him I have life. His abundant life. The Lord is my light and strength. He has made me just as He is. By His Spirit, I increase in work and in wisdom, in faith and in favor. The Lord has said, in blessing I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply your seed. So I can boldly say, my God shall increase me more and more. What I place in God's hands grows into overflow. Though my beginning was small, my end shall grow greatly increase. In this year of increase, I grow in grace and in strength to be all that God wants me to be. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So today, uh, we are going to continue our month-long conversation. It's probably going to go, go, go into August. Um, on the book of Acts, we have been going through the book of Acts. We've remained at chapter 1 and chapter 2 for a while, for a reason. Because a lot happened in those two chapters of the book of Acts. So today, we're still going to be in chapter 2. But let me give some introductory, some background information before we go in. So um, the title for our discussion is New Realities. And today is going to be the part three of our discussion on the book of Acts, New Realities. Amen. We've already established a few things in our discussions so far. We said that the book of Acts is about transitions. Somebody say transitions. transitions. And it's also about the launch of the movement that we now call the church. You know the church is a movement. Amen. Amen. I pray that you will be caught up in this movement and never let go. Amen. Amen. And I pray that God will use you also to start other movements on earth. Yeah, the church is a movement. So the book of Acts is about transitions. And it's also about the launch of the church, you know, which we just come to, we've come to know as a church. And the reason we are focusing on this book, you know, this book at this time in our church, is that our church is also going through a transition. Amen? We're going, I will tell you what we are going through as a transition. And we are believing God to launch the church 
into a new place before the end of the year. Amen. Somebody say transitions again and say launch. Are you getting empowered here? Transitions and launch. So in the book of um, Acts, the transition that they went through was life in the time of Jesus Christ and life after Jesus Christ. That was the transition they went through. In our times, I want to say that the transition, the reason we are doing this series is that we are going through the transition from the COVID pandemic to life after the pandemic. Amen. I want to declare by faith that we are we have the pandemic behind us. Amen. Amen. Although some of the news items are looking bleak, we, we are people of faith. We don't live by the word. We don't, we don't live by what we hear. We live by the word of God. Amen. Amen. So that was the transition that they went through. Life with Christ and life after Christ. And then we are going through pandemic and post-pandemic transition. Now, the launch that they did was the launch of the church movement. And we are also expecting, believing God, that we will launch our church into a new place. A place of increase. We did the increase declaration because it's our year of increase. And we are believing God. We really like the, the, the cozy nature of our church. Amen. Some people live larger churches to come to smaller churches because they want it to, they want to connect. They want it to be family, a family feeling. But we also want God to increase us. Amen. We also want God to increase us. We believe in God that God will move us from a church of a few people to a church of a few hundreds of people. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. So in the book of Acts, the new realities are, are required a number of things. And we've already identified the things that are required. You know, where we're required at the time. We're going to go through that. Um, I don't know about your personal circumstances, but any time, you know how I said that we're believing God that God will increase our church, right? This year, at minimum, we want to be able to be to hit 100. Amen. Amen. 100 people in our church family. Do you think it's possible? Yes. Okay. And so, amen, I like that. Now, any time, just put a word in there before we even go forward. Anytime the church is doing something, you want to also plug yourself in the middle of what the church is doing. Amen. Because who is the church? We are the church. Hallelujah. So if we are believing God that God will increase the church, guess who is going to be increased? I am going to be increased. You are going to be increased. Amen. Once you catch that revelation and you begin to think that way, you are going to be blessed. As the church is being blessed, you are being blessed. As the church is being increased, you are going to be increased. Amen. Amen. Oh yeah. Whatever God is you know, sometimes I hear people say, Pastor, what time does your church start? Anytime I hear that, it tells me this person is not part of the church. Because of one word in the middle of it. What, what word is it? Your. It's past, it's past this church. It is not my church. You know, um, I, I also hear people say, oh, Pastor, I like your church so much. While that person is saying something good, in the middle of it, it makes me feel the person is more of a spectator an audience rather than a member. Amen. The reason this pillar is a member of this building is that it cannot do anything different from what the building is doing. It has, if the building is situated at 1200 North Santa Rosa Avenue, this pillar must be situated here. It cannot decide to go elsewhere. So we want to really in, um, evaluate our commitment, our membership of the church by some of these analogies. You know, when the church is open, right now the church is open, right? 
Where are some of the members? In fact, where are the majority of the members? They are not here. Is that the characteristic of a member? No. Amen. And so we, we have a, a few ways to go. Hallelujah. We have some ways to go. Because a member belongs where the body belongs. My arm, my right arm cannot decide to stay home while I am at work. Then it's not a member of me. It's not a member of me. And I don't know if you've ever walked on the street, I think I've said this before. <laughs> Have you ever walked on the street and then you saw just a, a, an arm walking on the street by itself without the body? That would be a nightmare. I think you will call that one, one right? <laughs> But then we have some arms, some in other places right now. We do have some arms of the church, some legs of the church, some necks of the church in other locations while the church is here. And so I am, this is what we're talking about. You want to embed yourself, align your, your visions and your aspirations with those of the church so that when the church moves, move. When God is moving, you are moving as well. Amen. When, when, when you gain perfect alignment with God, you realize that things begin to flow so smoothly in your life. I pray for you that perfect alignment will come. Say, I receive perfect alignment. I receive a member mindset. Because 
there was an empowerment. Empowerment shoots you to a new level in your life where you are able to do some new things. And the, the, the things that were difficult for you, all of a sudden, they begin to be easier and easier because empowerment has come. I, I pray that God will make some difficult things easier for you. In this year, amen. Come and see, I receive it. Amen. Amen. Many of the 
door will open for salvation. But a lot of things are going to be moved around. There will be a lot of unusual signs in the heavens, in the, on the earth, all around you. God is
And it's always a divine moment. When any time you are, you come to church, last week I said, when we come to church, we just feel. We walk out the door and then the world begins to drain us. Yeah, the world begins to drain us. You turn on CNN or Fox News, whatever, and they are draining you. And then you uh, go to work and the work is so stressful, it drains you a little bit. You know, you get into a little disagreement with somebody and it drains you a little bit. By the time you come back on Sunday, you are almost empty. And then we just feel again. Hallelujah. Devoted. 
themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals um, and to pray. Amen. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders, and all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshipped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Amen. Amen. Don't take it down yet. Go back to 42 and let's pick up some key words there. Let's, can you say devoted? So after being upgraded, this is some of the actions. Today we are tracking actions. Throughout the message, I'm going to be running up in a minute, but throughout the message, you want to track and glean actions that I can take after empowerment. Glean those things. One of the things we did was devoted. Devoted means that they left other things behind and then they fully committed themselves to the new cause. Amen. In this church, we are believing God that we will leave some things behind. Now, it has been the case that in the summer, I've noticed that trend, I don't know if you have noticed it, but in the summer, people in Tucson go away. <laughs> so Tucson becomes very, very quiet in the summer. And then people go on vacation, Disneyland and all the things, this is okay. And, and then the thing that what happened, the question I ask is what happens to the Lord's work? You know, you get a few days off work, and then you decide you're going to travel on Sunday, which is the Lord's day. So what? Devoted means that they left something behind. Some of them had to leave family. Some of them left their spouses and devoted to God, devoted themselves to the work of the Lord. I'm not advocating for that. Amen. And the Lord say, Pastor, you know when I preach, I'm, I'm very careful to point out things I am not saying. Because if you're not careful, you will say, Pastor said I should leave my spouse <laughs> and serve God. And I'm not saying that. Amen. All right. You bring your spouse with you to serve God. That is what Pastor is saying. And then the other things they did were teaching. It, there was a lot of teaching. There was a lot of fellowship. Fellowship. Fellows in a ship. Okay. <laughs> And there was a lot of sharing, sharing. Somebody say sharing. Yeah. We have our welfare front that we are trying to set up so that we can care for those in need, celebrate with people who are celebrating, mourn with people who are mourning. It's going to require a lot of sharing. And one of the things I'm believing God for, I'm looking this way because I'm looking at somebody. Amen. One of the things I'm looking, I'm believing God for is that if, uh, first Sunday or Day of every month, we will do a special welfare offering after our regular offering so we can build a welfare fund to take care of people in need. Amen. And then, um, so there was a lot of sharing, there was a lot of prayer. Somebody said, Prayer. prayer. Can I say it in a deep voice? Prayer. prayer. You know, that's how your voice becomes when you pray along. Prayer. Hallelujah. Somebody says signs and wonders. Those are some of the things that they did. Do you believe you can you can do some signs and wonders? Yeah. Oh yeah. Some of us never knew we could lay hands on people and they'll be healed. There was a few times that I, I there were a few times that I tried it out. I was a new Christian, I just tried it out a little bit. And then somebody reports that they are healed. I'm like, oh wow. So God can use me also to heal. Amen. And God can use you. Let's go on. Signs and wonders. The next verse says what? 44. 
44, they sold their property. You know what that word, sold their property and possessions? It's talking about sacrifice. Sacrifice. There was a lot of sacrificing. Sacrificing means that, hey, I don't have enough yet, but I can let go of some of what I have. Yeah. I, I could go to work this morning and earn some extra income, but I rather I decided to be in church. And I rather sacrifice that extra income that I would have made. That is sacrifice. Amen. They did a lot of sacrificing and they worshiped together. And then they met in homes and they shared and they praised the, the Lord and joined the goodwill. And each day, I really love that last sentence. Each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. May the Lord add to you each day. Somebody said, The Lord will add to me each day. As I observe the actions needed after my empowerment. The Lord will add to me each day. The Lord will add to our church each day as we observe the actions needed after empowerment. That's the message. I could have come here and just said that in one sentence and we will close. Amen. If you want to carry one sentence with you, the Lord will add to me each day after I have observed the actions needed after I am empowered. Amen. Amen. I think it's a good place to just run up. Amen. The scripture that I promised to read to you to assure you that you are empowered. Because we prayed. We church last Sunday. We spent time to pray that we are empowered. That, that scripture is from Mark chapter 11, verse 23 to 25. Just want to say it and read it and then we will pray today. Uh, Mark 11, 23, it says, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. Yes. Do you like the last verse? Yes. yes. What, what things? How many things? Oh, oh. Anything. Anything. Amen. So this scripture should be you should be pumped up when you read that. I tell you. Say, say I, tell, I tell you, you can pray for anything. Do it like anything. <laughs> and if you believe that you receive it, come on, let's say it. I receive it. It will be yours. Don't you love that? Sometimes you read the word of God and it tastes like honey to your lips and to your tongue. Delicious. That's how I feel right now reading that last verse. I can pray me, me, I can also pray for anything, and if I believe it, it's like a blank check to me. Somebody be on your feet and let's pray. Oh yes. Thank you, Jesus. And just pray right now. Say, Lord, I'm here. Just put it in your own words. I'm believing you for my next level. I am, we are believing you as a church for our next level of hundreds. We want to go into the triple digits as a church, oh God. And Lord, I want to go into some new areas, new levels in my life. And I'm going to apply these words. I'm going to apply this message. I will wait upon you. I will be empowered. After empowerment, I will take action. And Lord, I will believe you. I will have no doubt in my
your next level may be in the area of your relationships, and your next level may be in the area of your finances, your next level may be in the area of your physical health, your mental health, your next level. I don't know that, but in the tickets of the church, our next level is in numbers. And we pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are going to our next level. We are stepping into our next level. We have been empowered. We believe it. We have prayed. We have no doubt. We believe it. We are going to take the actions necessary, the requisite activities in order to enter into our promised land. In the name of Jesus, throughout this week, God is going to reveal to us the actions we need to take, the actions we need to take in order to our next level. God will reveal in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. So like I said, God is going to reveal to us this week. Wait upon him. Seek his face. Ask him, Lord, how can I move